Welcome to Bad Gear, the show about the world's most hated audio tools. For us, the people of the future, almost every sound imaginable is only the click of a mouse button away. Given you have thrown one million dollars at either Apple or your local gaming PC builder nerd, installed a piece of official corporate malware and you're willing to pay the monthly fee for the Netflix premium for synth fans. Today we are going to talk about the Roland JV1080. Back in the day, this 1994 sample-based synthesizer behemoth came with a similar value proposition, giving you all the sounds you could possibly need for music production with a depth of programmability so intimidating that most people just step through the presets anyway. Some things never change. At the first glance, the JV1080 is not only super and boasting a voice count that would have made your suburban mid-90s neighbor jealous. It is also ticking all the boxes. The third worst type of Roland display, a solid value knob as the only real UI element for adjusting synth parameters. And a front panel littered with minuscule buttons. Housing an even tinier red LED. In its unexpanded state, the core element of all tones is an 8 megabyte ROM containing 448 mysteriously mutilated waveforms sampled at 32 kHz. Pianos in varying degrees of thinness. Countless usable keyboard instrument samples. Too many guitars for my taste. Instruments from all around the globe. An entire band. And orchestra. Slightly underwhelming drum sounds. Vocal fragments. Cheesy Roland weirdness. And, of course, raw material for synth sounds ranging from basic waveforms, analog classics, LA synthesis leftovers, and loopy pad layers. Boomer shooter aficionados will appreciate the general MIDI mode. The depth of the RISC processor-based digital engine can be intimidating. Cross-modulation A somewhat anemic filter Two versatile LFOs Complex envelopes for amplitude, filter and pitch and a respectable arsenal of modulation possibilities for advanced sound shaping and working around the minimalist UI. A patch consists of four of these tones which can be structured in ten different ways with signal flows including a distortion-like booster and ring modulation. Even if you don't care about synthesizers at all, many of the presets will sound familiar. One insert and two send FX are adequate for the time of the synth's release, some of the algorithms are more than usable, but the reverb didn't age so well. Rhythm kits are specialized on drum sounds, which can be recruited from the entire roster of waveforms. 
Performance mode is 16 part multi timbrel, setting it up is not great, not terrible. And it allows for huge layers, splits, and playback of entire film scores via MIDI. No one in the 90s expected subscription models like Roland's current cloud offering to become a thing, but nevertheless, our favorite music tech giant figured out creative ways of profit maximization. The 1080 can be expanded with up to four SRJV80 boards, which are compatible with many classics of the JV, JD and XP ranges as well, one PCM extension for the front panel card slot and RAM cards for patch data. These were expensive back then and are expensive now. The manual comes in two flavors, surprisingly comprehensible by Roland standards and goofy 90s VHS, build quality is great, you can assign patches to one of the three stereo pairs of outputs and some JV 1080s can still still be found for the price of one year of Roland Cloud Ultimate. The Roland JV1080 is all over 90s pop music, movie soundtracks and beyond. Can we still get away with using these sounds or do we really have to subscribe to the cloud? You have already heard the 1080 in today's intro tune. That's no Jupiter 8, but it certainly packs some punch. Let's explore performance mode and check out some of the sounds people have bought the synth for back in the day. Pretty sure these sounds have paid for quite a few Maseratis a couple of years back. Today, on the other hand, it takes some self-confidence to put them in the spotlight of an arrangement without irony. I wanna know how the JV1080 fares as a faux analog synth hooked up to a MIDI controller for better tweakability. <laughs> analog wizardry can hide the IC timbre of an early digital Roland filter. That being said, it is perfectly suitable for managing the frequency range of a complex patch. Time to bring the JV1080 back to its comfort zone with some nightclub meets day spa 90s MIDI to money converter TV commercial wave. <laughs> the 90s rompler evangelist that I am, I expected the JV1080 to be the ultimate epiphany for me, which it isn't. While other sample based instruments from that era might be known for a few iconic sounds, the JV1080 has been beaten to death in commercials, TV soundtracks and disposable mainstream pop phenomena relentlessly, and I found it hard to maneuver around the cultural PTSD radiating from the otherwise great sounding instrument. What is more, Roland's infamous menu diving workflow requires a specialized muscle memory or b an extensive set of expansion cards, ideally both. Based on the premise that the JV1080 was the Roland cloud of the 90s, it fills me with horror to think about what their product portfolio might look like in 20 years from now. Thanks for watching and see you next time! Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the episode, feel free to like, subscribe, become a patron and leave a comment what other kind of gear you would like to see and hear on the show. 